It's uh, my pleasure to welcome to the stage uh, David Liddell, who since uh, 2000, David has been a partner at U.S. Venture Partners, a Silicon Valley-based uh, venture capital firm, and he has served as CAO of Interval Research and a Metaphor, which he founded, and is vice president of Xerox at IBM. Uh, he's also chaired as chair of the Santa Fe Institute, the SETI Institute, and the B612 Foundation. So please welcome David Liddell. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm in my golden years now, and by now I've served on a lot of different boards uh, of private corporations and uh, foundations, and especially nonprofit science and research and engineering organizations. And because of that, a lot of people have begun to ask me lately, David, what? attracted you to come to the B612 Foundation and work on that problem. And I'm going to tell you about that, what, what it is about it that attracts me. And uh, you may be a little bit surprised by my answer. First of all, there's a basic technical answer, which is that we can do it. Semiconductor technology and signal processing and aerospace engineering all at a point now where we know how to launch a mission like this, a survey of Earth-threatening asteroids, a complete survey, many times faster than that can be done now. And by the way, to us at B612, the most important thing is that that gets done. We have an effort of our own in order to keep up the pace, to keep the pressure on to do that kind of work. And if someone else should come along with a good approach that gets funded, we'll be delighted. But we do want to see the government become involved and push this activity forward. Now, the personal part for me goes like this. Many of the biggest challenges that face humanity seem to be those in which sacrifices for the greater good fall unequally on different regions or different nations or different cultures or different ethnicities. Those societies with the weakest economies frequently are those that also are at the greatest risk from natural disasters. The hazards of fire and flood and famine and earthquake are particularly harsh on struggling economies. Meeting the threat of climate change is really hard for these less developed or emerging economies. It does rely heavily on the rest of us to do our part, but climate change is going to be tough. We all know that. It will take generations. It's very hard to tell struggling societies, well, you have to stop burning charcoal. You can't raise so many herd animals. Uh, you have to stop deforestation. That's very difficult for them. And even here, we just try to recycle our plastic containers and, and do the best that we can or are willing to do to avoid climate change. Now, I'm damned if I want to see that go to waste because Earth gets struck by an asteroid, okay? Here we're in the middle of a generations-long difficult shared burden that we're all struggling with, and the worst of that load is falling on the people the least able to help themselves. What I like about attacking this asteroid problem is we can do it completely as a technical problem. It does not require cultural change. We won't have to ask those struggling economies to also do their share. It can easily be financed by one or a few wealthy nations. 
my friend Rusty Schweikart pointed out earlier that there were political matters that need to be handled. But that's all right. We have machinery to do that. That's what the United Nations is for. But this is exactly the kind of problem that technology can very, very cleanly solve. As uh, my friend Steve Jervison just pointed out, there is a venture-like structure to this kind of a project where you can attack the highest risk parts of the problem early with relatively low financing and eliminate the technology risk. And then later on, get other participants, hopefully including the government, to help with the construction and launch and operations aspect of a space-based infrared telescope. Now, we've been lucky in being here, the B612 Foundation in the West Coast of America, because we've been well served by this location. Since the funding for all these early challenges has pretty much come from the venture and technology philanthropists of Silicon Valley and of Seattle. And as our work advances, however, we begun to receive funds and interest and support from progressive donors in other regions. We'd like to use private charitable financing as much as possible prior to the construction, launch, and operations phases so as to reduce the technical risk prior to funding of a committed program. It's tremendously rewarding to me that so many whose wealth and well-being have really sprung from their belief in technology and their willingness to take risks, that these people have chosen to support us through this period of proof and prototypes in 2015 and 16. To help carry us forward to the next stage as we explain our mission, elaborate what we think should happen more broadly to the many foundations and individuals and government agencies who are finally awakening to the problem of the asteroid threat. Thank you.